Hi, this is Swan with Swan Amity Studios, and we are in the studio today working on some little samples. We're working on a black batik. We have a gorgeous wool batting inside here for a little extra loft and bounce in our project. And the thread in our machine today is a variegated gold, a 50 weight from Wonderfill from their Tutti line. And we're getting started first with our knot pre-buried, and we're just gonna make our first little shape before we trim off that extra tail. I'm holding on to it right now so it doesn't go anywhere as we get going. We're gonna start with a circle. And we're gonna be putting a couple of different things in our circles today. So I'm gonna go ahead and, and trim off my tail here. And let's just see what kind of things we can land in our circle shapes today. That first one, let's go ahead and start with a little snail trail. We're just gonna put a curl inside of the circle. And we're not gonna try to go right back on the line. Instead, we're gonna make that curl a little ribbony. Now, let's make a couple of those. And I'm going to be traveling between the ones I'm making with just a little bit of a ribbony line. And let's make our next one. And let's stick to that little curling shape for a second. Just a little curl inside of the circle. Let's make another little ribbony line. And I'm going to turn my sample sandwich so I can see where I'm going to land over here. Anytime we do that, we have our needle down in the machine. Now we're gonna keep going. We're gonna go ahead and create another little wiggling line. I'm gonna add a little circle in there. And here's our next circle. Let's see what we should put inside of this one. I like frequently to do something I call um, frog spawn, where we just wiggle into the circle and we wiggle back out of the circle so that we've created a little wiggle inside of it. And if you've seen frogs' eggs, it's kind of what a frog egg looks like as it begins to develop a tadpole. We'll go ahead and wiggle away from that and make another one. This one will make that wiggle so that we're less right on top of the wiggle, like we were here. And let's see what that looks like. Wiggle in. And this time, as we wiggle back out, we're kind of intentionally threading that previous wiggle. So we end up with something with a little more figure eighty inside of the circle. And let's wiggle away from that one. and make our next circle. Here we're going to be creating an S shape inside the circle, S, and put a curl on the back side of our S and come out. Now I really like how this one looks too, very cute, almost like putting a question mark inside of your circles. Let's wiggle away from that one and make one more. little loop and here's our next circle. Now I like to make the S's so that I'm kind of wiggling down so I tend to change my fabric direction when I'm working on a small sandwich. Now if I were doing this on a bigger quilt I would just have to get used to going without changing direction of my sample sandwich. So we do train ourselves to do that over time. There's my next one. You can see our original one here. Cute little curl, cute little curl. Not too different, but we like to make them all just unique, a little bit their own. Let's wiggle away from that one. And we'll make our next circle. This one I've made just a little bit oval-ish so that we can put a fractured line in the circle. And I like to call that one cracked egg. 
I think that's really fun. Let's go ahead and wiggle away from that one and make one more crack day. And remember we're making that circle just a little bit oval-ish. And we're going to wiggle with kind of a fractured line. And that gives us another cracked egg. Let's see if we can do a couple of other things inside of our circles. I'm going to go ahead and wiggle away from this circle. And this time I'm going to plan to make a little bigger of a circle. And I'm going to bring it towards you so you can see it on the camera. And here we go. Let's make a spiral this time. We're going to go into our circle. And as we come towards the center, we're going to hook, change direction. And we're going to kind of split the difference of our previous spiraling line until we hit the edge of our circle. See how that gave us a beautiful spiral? Lovely. I really like that. Let's wiggle away from that one and repeat our spirally shape. A little bit bigger of a circle to play in. I'll make sure you can see it there. Wonderful. And let's go ahead and spiral into the circle. We leave a little bit of extra room. We try not to make that initial spiral too tight so that when we do hook and turn around at the center, we have enough room to be able to get back out without making that too tight. So there's our second spiral. Let's go ahead and wiggle away from that one. Let's make just a tiny one here, not too big. We're just going to put a circle inside of our circle. Totally an option. There, I put two of them inside there. I like how that looks. I find that anytime I'm echoing circles inside of circles, I'm more comfortable making the biggest of the circles first instead of trying to echo around my initial circle. I'll make my smaller circle and then I'll put a bigger one in there if I want to. Let's make one more. Perfect. I really like that. It looks great. This gold from Wonderful, look how beautiful that is. It's a cotton and it really has such a beautiful variegation in it that it looks like a gold thread and I'm, I'm just really thrilled with that. Let's go ahead and make one more shape before we stop and we're going to use a variation on our spiral here but we're going to put a circle at the center of it because I think sometimes we're really good at this version of spirals and other times we're better at the other version of spirals. So let's loop a couple of times, get ourselves over here to a bigger space and make a new circle, a little bit bigger, just like our previous spirals. And let's spiral inside of it. This time when we spiral inside, we're going to come to the center and we're going to make a circle at the center. We're going to travel around that circle so that we're in that smaller space. Not on the outside of our little interior circle, but coming back through in the tighter indent. And once again, we're splitting the difference of our previously laid line so that we come out the other side. And we end up with a spiral with a circle at the center. Really like how that looks too. And let's wiggle away from that and do that one more time together. We'll loop. We'll come over here and make ourselves a bigger circle. Great. Let's spiral into that one. 
Remember, we're trying to leave some room to get back out. Circle at the center, come back around it, and travel, splitting the difference all the way out. Perfect. Now, you heard me say perfect, but check that out. Oof, not quite what I was aiming for there, but remember, you are not a programmed machine, are you? No, you're human. And what we're doing here is organic work because you are a computer, but you're an organic supercomputer. So whatever shapes you're putting inside your circles, have fun with them, throw perfect out the window, and stitch happy.